Good afternoon. Welcome to Art Online with Miss Brian from the Pickerington Public Library. I've got my helper here again today, Violet. Hi again. Hi. All right, well today we're going to talk to you about an art form called pointillism. Pointillism. Have you ever heard that word before? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Maybe. Just this week? Yeah. <laughs> Just this week. All right, well, let's share our screen here and we can show our friends what we've been working on. Pointillism. All right, simply, uh, we got real simple supplies for this one today. And again, we'll go over this at the end, but really you just need some markers, a pencil, a black marker or pen, and some paper. Um, we did end up using some Crayola markers later when Violet did her portion of the project, um, but any, any markers will do for this. If you don't have markers, you could try it with colored pencils or maybe crayon, but I think markers probably work the best for this project. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go over those elements of art again really quickly. Um, these are the basic components or building blocks of an artwork. Again, every artist uses one or more of these in every artwork that they make. Uh, we focused on color last week when we did our color wheel umbrellas. Um, and we've done some of these other ones in our previous videos, but we're going to kind of concentrate on value today. We're going to talk about what value is here shortly. There it is. It's the lightness or darkness of a hue. So when we create our projects today and in the artworks that we look at today, you'll see how artists use um, color to create value and they use this darkness or lightness um, to try to make um, the shapes kind of pop out. And we're also going to be using a technique called stippling. And this is the art of using numerous small dots or specks to fill up an area. So what did we use to make our dots? We used the markers. We used the markers, yeah. So we'll show them how we did that in a little bit. Well, I want to start uh, with a pretty special artist, a French artist named Georges Seurat. Um, he was born in the 1800s. He only lived to the age of 31. Um, he was from Paris and he came from a wealthy family. And the reason I bring that up is because um, most artists had to sell their artworks um, to make a living, you know, to be able to buy food or, or pay to live in their apartment. Um, but he was pretty lucky because his family was very wealthy. He was able to uh, just concentrate on his art. So he didn't have that pressure of having to try to make money off of his art. This is one of his more famous paintings. This is called Bathers at Onier. And this is from 1884. And if you look very closely at this painting, we're not quite to pointillism yet, uh, but you will see that he uses lots of tiny brush strokes to make this artwork. Why that is important is because this artwork is huge. It's huge. Do you want to see how big it is? Yeah. This artwork is six feet, seven inches tall and nine feet, 10 inches wide. So the best example I could find was LeBron James. Do you know who that is? He's a soccer ball player. Oh, that's basketball. Oh. <laughs> he's a famous basketball player. Yeah. So he's six foot seven inches tall, and that's how big this painting is. Can you imagine making a painting that big? Yeah. That's bigger than like our dining room table. It's really big. And remember, he painted with small brush strokes. So this painting he has here of these people swimming, he used teeny tiny brush strokes to make that. It probably took forever. Like, like a couple of years. It, you know what? I think it did take him a couple years to make this one. So this painting is one LeBron high and one and one thirds LeBrons wide. So it's pretty big. And I tell you this because in the next painting we're going to see by him, um, it's even larger. It's even more than one LeBron times one and one third LeBrons. So Surratt started to explore the science of optics and color. Remember we learned about color last week? Well, he figured out that instead of mixing the colors together, um, you could put dots of paint beside each other to create those colors. So do you remember how to make the color orange? I uh, use yellow and red. Yellow and red. So instead of mixing up an orange color, he might put a bunch of red dots beside a bunch of yellow dots. And and then you put orange inside and then And he didn't even have to put the orange inside. The way our eyes work, our eyes kind of look at that and they say, well, I see red and I see yellow. I kind of see orange. So he figured that out. 
um, he, he had been studying the science of color and he thought, well, that would be an interesting way to paint. So that's what he decided to do. And he called this divisionism, but we now call it pointillism. So pointillism is a technique in which you use small dots um, to make your image. So for two years, he worked on his most famous painting. He used this pointillism, these small dots, um, to paint a very famous painting called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. It was six feet, 10 inches tall by 10 feet, one inches wide. So it was bigger than the last painting we saw. People were amazed by this new way of painting. He painted it in secret too, because he wasn't very popular in the beginning of his career. So he ended up um, keeping this one secret until he, he showed it to the art world and they loved it because they hadn't seen anything like that before. Yeah. So people were pretty amazed by the way he did this. So when you see this painting, I want you to remember how big it is and think that he used teeny tiny dots of paint to create this artwork. Ready to see it? Mm -hmm. Look at that. So that whole painting is made up of teeny tiny little dots. What do you think some colors he could have used to make some of that green grass? How could he have made the green? He could use um, blue and yellow. He could use some blue and yellow. He may have added some green to it too. So again, this entire painting is made of teeny tiny little dots. It took him two years to make this painting. Yeah. He would spend his days going and observing and sketching people. And then at night he would secretly paint and work on this artwork. And just to show you two more examples of how he worked, again, these, a lot of these take several years to paint because it takes so much time. Um, so here we have his Eiffel Tower and another one called Gray Weather. I heard that one before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do some practice here. We're gonna show you the practice that we did. We're gonna practice pointillism with our markers. So on the first couple slides, you can see our practice that we just traced a circle and we decided we would try to choose a color and apply that color and this, this pointillism technique and see if we can make this round shape kind of come to life. So we started by putting very heavy dots very close to each other um, on the left-hand side of the picture. And here's Bios, this is her final one. So you can see on the left side, it's very dark with dots and then she uses less and less dots as she moves over to the right-hand side. So if you kind of squint your eyes, it kind of makes that shape look like it's three-dimensional or like a ball instead of a flat circle. It looks like it's a ball. Mm -hmm. So here's my progression. Um, starting from left to right, you see I started with those heavier dots. And as we moved over, I added um, a little less red as I went along. And then a little less red, as you see in the third picture. And then the fourth picture, you see it's only a couple dots over red, on the far right-hand side. Three, four, five, six, seven. This is another way that we can do it. Um, this would be more the way that Sarah did it. Um, but to make the color green, he would use what colors? Blue, the green, the yellow. Yeah, he's going to use blue and yellow and some green to make the green. So this is another technique you could use when you make your artwork, but this is one we just kind of did for practice. So we used heavy blue on the left-hand side. And then you can see I added a little bit lighter blue in the middle there. And I say lighter meaning um, less dots. Then I started to add some green. And then I added more green. And then I kind of slowed down on the green over on the right hand side and then I added that yellow. And then it just kind of even it out at the, at the very end here on the last slide. Um, I added a little more green and just to try to make it look a little more mixed up. So you can see how I started with the blue to the green to the yellow, but they kind of overlap each other. So that's another technique you use when you make your own project. All right, so we decided we would make balloons for our pointillism project. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of sketched out my balloons. You can see that on the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, you can barely see the lines. What I did was I erased the lines because I don't really want the pencil marks to show up in the artwork. So I erased those so that they could just look very, very light. And here I started with blue. You can see again, 
Um, the reason I started with dark on the left hand side is let's imagine that there is the sun or bright light shining from the right hand side. So as the light hits the object, it's going to be lighter on the right side and it's going to get darker as it goes to the right. So I always started, uh, or sorry, to the left. So I start on the left hand side with those darker shades and then I use less and less dots as I move towards the right. So that's the blue balloon. You can see behind it, I worked on the green balloon. Again, very dark, not a lot of white spots left. When I work on the left side, but as I move towards the right, I use less and less green dots. Here I added the orange. And then blue, oh sorry, that was purple in the front there. There's blue in the background. And then I added the yellow. So here we have my five balloons. And then I just drew a little kind of like triangle of shape at the bottom for where you tie off the balloon. Added some strings and kind of tied those together at the bottom with a little, little bow. With a little bow, yep. So Violet did the same thing. So she sketched out two balloons. She decided to do two for hers. She chose some different color markers. So here you can see her working. She works um, from left to right like I did. Heavier marks on the left hand side and as she moves to the right, she gets lighter and lighter. So she did a pink and a turquoise kind of color. And here's her finished product. So again, the easiest thing to remember with this project is just pick a side. You do heavier marks on one side and as you Light. move to the other side, you do less and less dots, right? Light. What was the hardest part about this for you? It took some time. It did take some time to make all those dots. And if you go too fast, they start to not look like dots, right? So you have to be careful with dot, 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 dot. dot, dot, dot. And we took a couple breaks in between, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We did take a couple breaks. It's not hard work, but it's kind of tiring work. So we, we took a few breaks in between all of our dots. Um, if you have little ones at home and you want to try this project, or if you don't want to draw your own picture, uh, I just picked up a coloring book and I thought I would try this technique inside the coloring book. So that was kind of fun, fun too. So if you've got extra coloring pages at your house, this would be a fun, different way to color a coloring book instead of just all right, so again, our supplies were pretty simple for this project. Pencil, colored markers, a black marker, a pen, and some paper. Use whatever materials you have available to you. And you can show us your work. If you decide to make one of these pointillism projects, um, you can post your work. So if you're on Facebook, then you could post your picture in the comments. Uh, if you're on Instagram, you could use the hashtag PPL at home, and we could see the artworks that our, our friends are making at home. That'd be cool, huh? And see how many people like our video. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for our art project today. We'll be back with another one in the coming weeks. Um, just wanted to say thanks and um, please visit the Pickerington Public Library website and our social media pages um, to see what we're up to in the library. Bye bye. Bye.